Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of DABCC TV. We have a fabulous show for you today. We have Logic Monitor back on, uh, back. Well, not on the. This is the first time we have them on DABCC TV, but we had them on DABCC Radio, and uh, so definitely refer to that podcast for a slew more lo of Logic Monitor information. But we're going to give you a, a a lot of great stuff today. We're gonna we have Steve Francis on the line. And he is going to walk us through and show this stuff off. So with no further ado, let's jump into this. Steve, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us today. Sure, Doug. Thanks for having me. It's uh, always a pleasure to talk to you guys. Always a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. I, I You know, I really enjoy these. I enjoy everything, don't I? But, uh, <laughs> you know, the, I, I don't enjoy doing that one at all, you know. People are like, well, wait a second. Why do I watch it if you don't enjoy it? But I do enjoy it, and and but I what I love about these is is we do so many podcasts. We talk about things, right? We write about things. But what's neat about the DABCC TV is we we get to see it. You know, right. the proof is in the pudding. So uh, let's get to that. As always, my first question is: Can you tell us who you are and what do you do over at Logic Monitor? Sure. So I'm actually one of the founders of Logic Monitor. Um, so right now I am the chief product officer. So uh, my background is. I used to be a. I used to run data centers. I ran data centers for National Geographic Society. I ran the data centers for the University of California statewide network. Um, I ran data centers for Citrix Online. Uh, so I kind of used to be the guy that had to keep everything up all the time and manage the people. And so monitoring was always kind of fold on fell, fell under my umbrella and was never something we could deal with adequately. So really, I went off and found a logic monitor to solve the problems I had when I was running data centers. Of course, ironically, now I don't run data centers. I have people that do that for me <laughs> with logic monitor. But we still get to use we still get to use this tool to monitor our own infrastructure, which helps a lot. So, so now I'm kind of in charge of the product side of it, defining how we go about solving the problems for the people that still are doing what I used to do, running servers, running networks, running infrastructure, keeping applications up and running all the time. So I go out and I talk to a lot of customers. I come back and do the specifications and deal with the development team and marketing and so forth. Absolutely, absolutely. We chatted about the hosting stuff uh, in the podcast. I, you know, I think I even said I love hosting. So uh, <laughs> I was one of the big fans of ASP back in the day. And That's right. That's what we used to call it back when uh, Expert City, which is what became Citrix Online, we used to call ourselves an application service provider. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> back good. before SaaS got invented. Yep. But, but but then ASP became sort of a bad word, you know, it was like portal or something. But nowadays right. it's nowadays we can achieve it. You know, that's the whole thing is the idea. It wasn't a bad idea. It's just we weren't ready for it. You know, nowadays we're truly ready for it. Right. I mean, if you're looking at the – actually, I talk about it, this a bit in the talk, but if you look at the progression, the way things gone, you know, people – once SaaS software as a service came online, then they started using Amazon and infrastructure, and then they built services on top of that, and now people really are using applications on the cloud rather than infrastructure. So it's kind of – everything goes in circles. Absolutely, and it makes a heck of a lot of sense too. And, and that's one of the neat things that separates you guys from everybody else is that you are a SaaS provider. You, you offer this as a SaaS solution versus, okay, I'm going to take a year to install it. Right. So with that's actually one thing I'm well, going to show. I'm let's let's get to it. I, I I will I you know I love what you guys do. I truly do because it is unique and because there are so many problems with performance monitoring solutions out there. And I think you guys address a lot of the inherent problems with it because of your 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 mindset. You know. So with that, I I don't need to chat. I'll let you do it. So you know, here it's your time. Have at it. Show us what what you guys got. Okay. Uh, I am going to do a live demonstration of getting a complete brand new account. If you came in as a as someone came into our website and said, you know what, I want to try this out. This is the process you would go through, and you could see you can be monitoring infrastructure within like literally five minutes, and that's what we'll go through, which is taking advantage of the video technology. Um, but just a quick introductory slides, which I'm going to keep very quick. So this is the slide where I establish what a great company we are and how much credibility we have. So um, yeah, I've already talked about the fact that I used to be the guy in the trenches having to keep the infrastructure up. And I think our product reflects that. That really is our heritage. All the engineers here, all the support guys, they've almost all come from an operations background. Um, so this quote from one of our customers uh, just, just reflects that. So I'm going to whiz through this stuff. But we, you know, if you're looking for credibility, we have federal, state, and local government customers. We have everything from Fortune 500 customers through Honda dealerships in Estonia. <laughs> we, we literally have customers all over the the size 
range and uh, probably 30% of our business is outside the US. So we're, we have a pretty good worldwide presence at this point. Um, so one of the things that, you know, when I was running data centers, data's mostly consisted of things like physical servers. When we had to expand, we went and, you know, had someone go and rack more servers and maybe plug in an extra storage array and plug in an extra, you know, Cisco router or upgrade a 6500 and put in redundant supervisors or some such thing. And even that level of complexity, which was physical, so it wasn't an enormous rate of change. If you wanted to provision new servers, you had to order them, they had to arrive, they had to be unboxed, burned in, and racked, and so forth. Even with this rate of change, monitoring systems we found were still not keeping up with the changes in the data center because there were people involved in the provisioning of the changes in the monitoring systems. So when someone would provision a new volume on the storage array, part of the workflow would supposed to be and added to monitoring. And that would often not happen. I'd say I'd get to that later. They wouldn't get to it later because sysadmins are always busy. Um, and so six months later, that volume would fill up. First thing you know, customers are calling and complaining and saying, hey, my recorded session isn't showing up or what have you. So the first thing, first thing you know is when customers are complaining, as we always like to say, everyone always has at least two monitoring systems. One is their customers. And the other one is their boss. You don't ever want either of those monitoring systems to be the first thing to alert you to any problems. All right, so then data centers got more complex, more advantages with things like VMware and the virtualization systems. Great systems. Um, we use them extensively ourselves internally, but uh, they obviously mean you can now spin up so not just machines, but whole servers, virtual servers really quickly, move them around, uh, change their capacity on demand. And that obviously makes the monitoring, if you're doing this dynamically, it really makes means the monitoring cannot be done manually. If you're spinning up virtual machines at a rate of, you know, tens per day, even even one or two per day, your monitoring system is not going to be able to catch and monitor those machines if it's depending on someone to go in and say, I've added a new virtual machine. Or even if you've gone in and said, I've changed the memory allocation on this machine from, you know, four gigs to eight gigs, or I've doubled the number of CPUs or cores or changed them or reduced them or changed its I.O. preference. And now, of course, we've added cloud on top of that. So... Amazon Web Services, people are building things, people are building part of their infrastructure on Amazon EC2. They're renting servers from them effectively. But, and then they're also using services such as the uh, Elastic Load Balancers and Elastic Turk and services that Amazon provides to build their applications. So now you need to monitor in infrastructure across all these different layers at an ever increasing rate of change with tools that in many cases depend on you manually changing them, which just doesn't work. So really, you need to solve all these issues in all these places. You need availability is the basic level of monitoring. Are things up? Are things down? That's great. Things like, you know, there's a lot of systems that can do that kind of monitoring. Uh, is my process running? But that doesn't tell you if you're having the capacity to deal with your workload. And more importantly, if you're dealing with, uh, if you've got the performance to deal with the requirements that your users want. Users, as a rule, they don't care about, you know, CPU loads and disk latencies. They care about, you know, it, can I enter my payroll quickly? Or do I have to wait 34 seconds after every time I press submit to get the next form up? So you really want to get ahead of the performance curve. And monitoring all these dimensions, performance, capacity, and availability, gets harder as you go across more locations and as you add in more complexity with virtualization. So if you have your own data center, then you might start a secondary data center for a disaster recovery or possibly for an acquisition. Then you might run some things in the cloud for capacity bursting. You need to monitor all these things simultaneously and often issues, performance issues particularly, are going to be correlated across multiple locations and across multiple systems. So you really need one place that lets you see across all these dimensions in all the locations simultaneously without adding extra to your workload because I don't know any sysadmins or any companies that are employing systems or network administrators that have guys just sitting around saying, you know what, how can we make things better? Because they don't have anything to do. Everyone has way too much to do. So you really need to automate and scale things as much as you can. And that really is the path to happiness. The path to happiness in monitoring and application availability is ideally not to have to pay much attention to it. You just want a path that's leading you down the way. You want a system that's going to say, I'm going to deal with all my infrastructure in all my locations. It doesn't matter where it is, whether it's in the cloud, it's in my data center, it's virtualized, it's a physical server, it's in my other data center. It could possibly in my customer's data centers um, where I can get one view of all these 
systems and servers and applications and will automatically keep itself up to date. So if I change a database from a master to a slave, the monitoring will adapt. If I bring up a new instance of MongoDB because my developers suddenly decide we need that, then the monitoring will figure it out. You don't have to rely on the people to configure the monitoring. You need the monitoring to config, for, figure out what's going on and then tell you about it. Then you can adjust it. So I'm going to dive into a demonstration really quick. So uh, we're going to do a quick demonstration of how quickly you can be up and running with a hosted service. Uh, as Doug was saying, one of the beauties of Logic Monitor is that it is software as a service, which means you sign up, there's nothing to install. But caveat, as we'll see in a second, you don't have to install any monitoring software. You don't need to provision servers. Uh, that's all running in our infrastructure. Obviously, the way that uh, we assume that you're behind your firewalls, we're behind our firewalls. So architecturally, we do have a collector that runs inside your firewall, and I'll show you that. So if this is a brand new account, nothing in it. So this is the process every user would go through. I will turn off my password saving. All right, so I don't need to watch the tutorial videos because I've done this before. So I'm going to create myself a username. It's only one, one V. And I'll leave myself in GMT. Okay, I've created my account. That's correct. All right, so the way that we work architecturally is your servers are all behind your firewall. Our servers are in our data centers in the cloud. Uh, there is a Java application that could be installed on Windows or Linux. You only need one per data center or one per location. You can set up multiple ones for failover. Uh, and all that does is it collects the data using the various protocols, SNMP, WMI, Perfmon, JMX. There's like 30 or 40 different protocols the way it can collect data. So it collects the data from all the servers and applications and infrastructure, encrypts it, posts it back to us, which means that you can then view that data from anywhere on the internet via a web browser, and you can get alerts anywhere. That actually has an important point when you're talking about monitoring because it means the alerting is happening outside your data center. We've had several customers that have come to us specifically because they've had what they thought was fairly comprehensive monitoring that was running inside their data center. And then their data center had a power outage or a network partition, and their monitoring detected it but couldn't tell anyone because the alerts were all inside and turn, either turned off or couldn't get out too. So having your monitoring external to all your facilities, very important thing. All right, so this just tells you more about the collectors, that you can run multiple collectors, they don't use much resources or so forth. So I'm going to install a Linux collector on this system here. And we'll go through the whole process of getting a new account up and running. And you'll see it really is about a matter of minutes. All right, so now all I need to do is run this executable I just installed. And these Java Java collectors, so that's it. That's the that's the entire process that you need to do on a system where you want to run the collector. As I was saying, you can run multiple collectors for failover and so forth. All right, so we can tell it that if the system goes down, we want to if this collector goes down, obviously it's not going to be collecting data. That would trigger a collector failover, but we also want to know about it. So that's where that, that's what that screen is telling us uh, to use the default escalation chain. I do want to know about it. So this should, the collector should be reporting in. All right, the collector was successfully registered. So that means the collector that we installed in that Linux system has now talked back to us and said, yes, I'm alive. Now, the next step would be to add in a host of monitoring. So we now have a monitoring system up and running. We can monitor whatever we want. So I'm going to add in one system here. And we're going to pick the collector that's responsible. In this case, we only have one collector. So that's the one I'll pick. We're giving the device a quick probe. All right, so we logic monitor detected that this is a, the device I added is a ESX device, but the passwords, 
which we haven't given it any, don't work. So it's saying change the passwords that we want to use to log into this ESX device and try again. So I'm just going to give it uh, root passwords because this is just in our lab. And normally we, we walk you through the process of uh, creating a limited role. Now it's going to try that device with those, the correct username and password. Assuming I typed it right, which I did. All right, submit. I've now added the host. Do I want to add another one? No, thanks. So let's just look. So this is the host we just added. So we started a brand new account. We, we installed a collector, which basically consisted of downloading and running an installation program. Then we said monitor this device. So it figured out this is a VMware ESX host. It figured out it's running all these virtual machines. Uh, so we'll be able to see the data on all these virtual machines. It's figured out that some of these machines have snapshots, which is why they snapshots that are older than a certain age, which is why they're showing up in red. That means there's things in alerts. But um, we've got all sorts of information without having to do anything. So if we add a new interface onto this host, if we sp spin up new virtual NICs, physical NICs rather, they'll show up here automatically. If we add new data stores, they'll show up automatically. Um, if we provision new virtual machines, they'll show up automatically, new resource pools. So the whole idea of a monitoring system should be that it's automated, that it does most of the work for you. So with Logic Monitor, you configure a device. Logic Monitor knows how to monitor that device. It knows the best practices. Uh, our best practices are defined mostly based on, you know, in the case of VMware, they're based on VMware's best practices. Some of them we've tuned based on our experience and some of them based on the collective experience of our customer base. So you actually really do get a lot of best practices built into the system. Um, and then it knows what to monitor and continually refreshes itself. It's always looking if new virtual machines have been created, if they've been migrated to a different host, if the host is, has new resource pools defined. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Obviously, there's not a whole lot to see on this particular host yet because we just started monitoring it, so there's no history as of yet. Uh, there will be in, you know, five minutes. We're probably getting data now. Yeah, so, so we're getting, we are getting data, but we've only got one data point and you need at least two to show up on a graph. You can't draw a line with one data point. So we'll go look at a different application setup that he's obviously been running for a while. <clears throat> so this is just an example of what you can do when you've been monitoring data for a while. Um, so this is a dashboard. Logic Monitor has a couple of different architectural areas. Dashboards is the one that many people spend a lot of time in because it lets you look at things visually and spot outliers very quickly. You know, so if I wanted to see on all my infrastructure, show me the virtual machines that are using CPU. It's like, hmm, why are these ones using CPU so much more than anyone else's? Well, these ones happen to be, you know, virtualized storage appliances. So that's okay. This is just running in our lab. It's fine that these are consuming almost all the resources allocated to them. We've got a, a virtual NetApp and a virtual EMC Celera. That's what's using all the CPU. I can deal with that. Uh, you can turn off these lines. So you can say, which will make the other ones clearer. Um, you can zoom in on different time frames. The whole idea of Logic Monitor is it'll make your work easier. So if you do identify an issue, say you want to know what this what this spike is. All right, it's a Zen server. I could go in and look at the host detail, and I'm going to have all sorts of information about all sorts of systems. So I can look at the the disk load on the Zen server in the aggregate. I can look at it for the individual Zen server virtual machines. And when the, when you get down to a virtual machine, like a, a common issue is you may be looking at your ESX infrastructure, for instance. <clears throat> so this one, this system that I'm looking at is the virtual center. So it, it knows about all the ESX hosts. So here I can see there's three ESX hosts being run by this virtual center. And if I want to see an overview graph showing, all right, of my ESX hosts, What's the CPU load on them? That's automatically generated. I don't have to do anything. If I wanted to add this to my graph dashboard, I can do that very quickly. Uh, I wanted to add this to my virtualization dashboard. So now that this graph will show up on my virtualization dashboard. You can create all sorts of other custom overview graphs, but most of the, most of the data you use is often there automatically already. So one of the coolest things in the ESX world is the top 10 graphs that are automatically created. So if you're looking at, you know, a common situation is you'll get an alert that 
disk latency is going off on one of your ESX hosts or that it's running out of running low on memory and starting to trigger ballooning and, and so forth. Or even worst case, it's going to be swapping. You're going to want to know which virtual machines are consuming the resources that are causing that. So if I look at these overview graphs, which cre are created automatically, you can see the top 10 machines by CPU, top 10 machines that are running into the CPU ready state. So I know which ones are being starved of resources by these ones that are using the CPU. Um, I can see which ones are doing local disk operations, virtual disk operations. So if, if I get an alert that disk latency is high on a data store, I can see, oh, well, that's because this NFS server that's running virtualized is doing, well, it's only doing 20 disk IOPS. But if it was doing a lot, that would likely be the cause. Uh, similarly, if my memory usage changed because I'm starting to get ballooning or swapping, I can look at the graph for memory usage. I may want to look at it for a history and say, all right, what's changed over the last month? Uh, not a lot. Looks like we shut down a, a VSA virtual machine for a while, which changed the total memory usage. But um, other than that, things have been fairly consistent. And this VSA reduced its memory usage here. But if we see a big spike here, it's very quick to identify, oh, I'm getting a memory issue on this ESX host because virtual machine Windows 2008 is the one that suddenly increased its memory usage. So it makes troubleshooting much, much quicker. Um, the other advantage, of course, is that you have all your information from the application level, the operating system level, the virtualization layer, the storage layer, the network layer, all in one place. So if, for instance, I'm looking at a, say, looking at a Linux host, um, say we're looking at one of our machines. This is not one of our production machines, but if it was, I could be looking at the Tomcat statistics because this is really what people care about. They want to know the response time. So Logic Mond is going to figure out, all right, this is a Linux machine. It's running all these applications, one of which is Tomcat. Tomcat is a Linux Java web server. So the thing that really matters, the whole point of this machine, is that it's serving web requests, and you want that to be quick. So the number of milliseconds per request. So there's going to be an alert on this, um, which we can look at. So if the request time is greater than 40 milliseconds, we're going to have a warning alert. If it's greater than 100 milliseconds, we're going to have an error. And that can get escalated through to my email. If I don't respond, it can go to someone else's email, or and then it can go to my pager and their pages simultaneously. And if no one responds, then it can phone, Logic Monitor can actually phone, call them up on people up on their cell phone and read an alert to them. And then they can press one to acknowledge, two to escalate, and so forth. So there's a whole alert escalation and routing system in there too. But, um, so the idea of this is you get to see, all right, this is the performance that people are caring about. You don't just know CPU, which you obviously do get CPU, but you get to see the thing that people really care about is this response time. The thing that affects how this response time is, is a lot of this other data. So for instance, garbage collection in the JVM that it's running in. Um, if you get a spike in garbage collection, this is okay. We're going up to, you know, 72 milliseconds. But if this went up to significantly higher, it would increase the time that the whole system is spending in garbage collection rather than doing useful work. So if this was up at 30%, then that would trigger an alert and you'd know, all right, there's something wrong with my garbage collection. It's probably related to my, the way that I've sized my Java memory pools, which we also happen to be wondering. So you can see, you know, this is when gar the garbage collection increased, when we ran out of the past survivor space. Then garbage collection started cycling more frequently and using more time. In this case, it's fine. We don't, but if that, if that amount of time spent in garbage collection was significant, that would be taking away CPU from doing, quote, useful work and might be affecting the response time, which is what people actually see, our customers. And so then you might, you'd have the data to say, all right, I need to, restart my JVM and increase the amount of space that I've allocated to the young generation. So that's the idea of Logic Monitor, that you get a heads up view on your dashboards. Um, we should have that. Uh, this, this is the graph we added to the dashboards before. But you get a heads up view of your dashboards that shows you all the things that matter in your system. So you can just have a heads up dispute view of whatever matters to you. If you're the virtualization guy, this is probably the dashboard you're going to be looking at. You want your virtualization alerts and some dashboards, graphs showing different things. 
if you're a the storage guy, you're probably going to be looking at a different dashboard. You're going to be looking at your your NetApps and Equalogics and EMCs, um, their CPU load, their volume latency, the top ten volumes by IOPS and so forth. So you, you're going to and and filtered alerts relevant to you. So you're going to have your view of alerts, your view of overall metrics. But then when there is an issue, you're going to have the data to dive into that system and say, all right, I can dive into the volume performance on each volume. I can look at the request time and correlate that to my garbage collection time and correlate that with my memory pool sizing. And that's true of pretty much everything in the data center is what we aspire to provide that level of insight for. So whether it's Java applications or Memcached or Mongo or Windows applications, um, Exchange, SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, um, everything that's in a data center, .NET applications, queuing systems, um, that, that's what we try to provide this level of information for, and you don't need to think about it. The monitoring system figures it out for you. So, um, and then, of course, the other part of the application is you've got your infrastructure working, you're serving web requests successfully, you get good response time from your users, but at least you get good response time from what your server is delivering, but then you need to check that from the outside point of view. So you may want to know how, how quick is my website responding from the East Coast for a full page load versus the West Coast, which is slightly slower because it, this is checking our website, which happens to be running out of an Amazon data center, which happens to be in Virginia, D.C., near, near D.C. So it's naturally with speed of light and whatnot, it's going to be quicker through the East Coast. And you may want to know how this is changing over time. Uh, so if I look at this for the last month, our website wasn't as fast earlier in the month. So now you, you have data to know, all right, something changed. What actually changed here was we put more content onto our CDN. So most of our website is now being served from the content delivery network, which speeds things up, um, which is better for everyone. But now we actually have data, all right, does paying for this CDN, is it empirically proving, improving our website response time? Yes, it is. Does that improve our conversions? We actually have other graphs on that, not in this portal, but uh, not in this application view, but, but we can correlate that together. Which is one last interesting point. You can actually graph things that are not system related. Um, so if I'm a bank, for instance, I can graph things such as the ATM transactions per minute. Logic Monitor isn't a fixed system in that when you turn it on, you log into your account, you're going to have the ability to automatically monitor then server and VMware and NetApp storage arrays and Ecologics and Citrix Netscalers and Linux and Oracle and so forth. But it's also an extendable system. So if you write a custom .NET application that exposes perfmon counters or there's data in a database, such as the number of database, so sorry, such as the number of ATM transactions that have occurred up to this point in time, it's very easy to write a what we call the data source, which is basically a definition of what to collect and monitor, to extend what Logic Monitor does. So you can get the number of ATM transactions per minute. You can actually get things like the revenue per minute that you're deriving from those ATM transactions if you had that as your business model. And then you could see where things are breaking down. It's like, all right, why did our ATM transactions continue, but our revenue failed at this point? So clearly, when we reach our peak level of ATM transactions, there's some bottleneck in our infrastructure. This is obviously made up data. We're not, no, no bank that I know of monetizes their ATMs. They could do it putting ads on them or something. But actually ad networks do do exactly this kind of thing. We have many advertising networks as customers and they can plot exactly their revenue per minute by ad type, by type one ads, by banner ads, by interstitials, by display ads. Um, and these kind of dashboard metrics become very useful to the CEO and the CFO. They can see their performance in real time. They can see which ad types are working best. And this kind of data is applicable in all sorts of uh, businesses. So mm -hmm. having a business level view and being able to correlate that to your infrastructure performance is a great way to justify an increase in spend on your infrastructure. It's like, I need to justify this new router. How can I do that? Well, I can show my executives that when, I, when, when our latency goes above 30 milliseconds, it impacts our bottom line. Here's the graph that correlates it. it makes it a very powerful presentation if you're looking for budget justification. Um, I think that's all I want to say. Uh, 
we obviously have greater reporting. We have the ability to, you know, you can filter through your alerts and create customized views and so forth. But um, you can acknowledge alerts, you can escalate them. But really, I, I don't want to get into too much. I just want to give you a detail of how quick it is to get up and running. So if we switch back to that site we set up before, you know, we'll we'll start seeing we should start seeing some data now. Yeah. So this so now on with no work, we 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 added this ESX host, we found all its virtual machines. It knows what to monitor. It knows how to monitor CPU blocking and disk data rates and operations and whether it's swapping or ballooning and uh, without me having to know what to monitor on a specific device or having to go and set it up. So that's the beauty of Logic Monitor. We actually try and make your lives simpler down in the trenches. I love it, Steve. I love it. Five minutes and I'm up and running, or just a couple minutes I'm up and running, and then five minutes later I have data coming in, and I didn't have to do anything really. Yeah, and I you mean, could obviously, powerful. I just added one ESX host. You could add, you know, five sure. or ten hosts, as many as you want. You can set up network scans so we can discover all the hosts for you, and you can just as easily add the monitoring into Amazon EC2 or multiple data centers. If you've got multiple data centers, you'd install a collector in each data center. But as we saw, that's a one-minute process. Yeah, that's amazing. So uh, we're right at our time limit for the videos, but I have one more uh, thing to ask you, and that is if somebody wants to learn more, what do they need to do? Best ways, just go to www.logicmonitor.com. There's a website there with all sorts of information. Um, if you wish to get started right away, there would be a try it now button. Uh, try it free. Okay, try it free. We also have you know the online chat there. But um, we have support that's around the clock, so for technical support, but our sales, the sales chat system is mainly uh, I think that's 8 a.m. UK time to 5 p.m. Pacific. But support also covers Australian hours, which happens to be where I'm from. So I know some people down there. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Okay, buddy. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. I, I, I love what you guys do, like I said in the intro. So uh, uh, we like to keep these things right about a half an hour. So I'll just go ahead and conclude this. But thank you again for taking the time to be with us today. Yeah, my pleasure. I had a lot of fun. Hopefully it was useful. Absolutely. So guys out there in uh, video watching land, thank you so much for attending this episode of DABCC TV. As always, definitely visit DABCC.com for the latest and greatest virtualization news and support resources and cloud too. virtualization and cloud, SaaS, things like this. Uh, you know, all that, all those technologies relating to enterprise IT today is basically what you'll find at DABCC.com each and every day. So on that note, thanks again to our guest today, Steve Francis, and definitely check out Logic Monitor. Very impressive stuff. In fact, I was actually just received an email a couple days ago. I was chatting with a, a guy uh, out there uh, who's a listener and, and said, you know what, I saw that Logic Monitor stuff that you guys were showing off and, and uh, put it in. Uh, I bought it. I loved it. So uh, true success story right there from one of our, our users. So uh, neat stuff.